Right, here we are. Yorkshire or nothing, my main save for FM22. It has been 345 days in the making since I came up with the idea back in December 2020. And it's finally here. All right, but before we get into today's episode, I'd really appreciate it if you smash the like button. So important for a little channel like myself to get into that YouTube algorithm and have what's going to be a fantastic series, I think, on the channel. I've been looking forward to this for ages. Finally put it together. So in today's episode, we're going to look at the club the squad that I've put together, the backroom staff that I've put together, the tactics that we're going to be looking at, and also we're going to just have a little look across the city of York at our main rivals and see what we're going to be coming up against this season in Yorkshire or nothing. All right, boys, so here we are. By the way, shout out to the three Yorkshire tiers, the music, the intro. I'll put a little link to their YouTube channel down below. A group of Yorkshire men who just have a little bit of fun with a few parody songs. Go check them out just for five, ten minutes. Great video, just say that. If you comment any of the videos, just say I sent you across. They very kindly let me use their theme tune for this year's save. All right, here we are, Athletic Club York. Now, if you weren't aware and you're not sure what the series is about, go check out the video that's up above now. It gives you a little bit of backstory. But basically, we are a fan-owned club, main rivals to our York City, who have now changed their name to York City Soccer Club. They are owned by an American billionaire pumping money in. We're doing it very differently in terms of how we recruit players. We're fan-owned, as I said, but at the same time, we can only sign players that were born in Yorkshire or keep hold of any players that come through our youth system. So we're going to heavily focus on training, heavily focus the save on youth development, protecting our players, and uh, let's just see how far we can get. Now, I have no idea how far I can take this save. Because of the limitations we have, I'm not sure how far I can take them. Um, obviously, York City Soccer Club, I think over the course of maybe the duration of the save, 10, 15, 20 years, they're going to get into the Premier League, no doubt. Where would you like to see us reach? What would you like to see us reach? Put it down in the comments. What's a realistic goal? It's all going to depend on, I think, over a period of time of what we can get in and what we can develop at the club. So improving the facilities is going to be absolutely key. So we are playing at Boodham Crescent. Here are the kits put together by John over at Monarch Kicks. Links down below if you ever want your own custom, real custom made kits. I've got the home and away shirt coming very, very soon. Uh, Grass and Gear also, FM Podcast, very kindly sponsoring the club this season. So that's the club. Let's go and meet the players who are going to be representing Athletic Club York in their first ever season. All right, so remember, all players in the squad have been born in Yorkshire. Most of them have been free transfers. I've picked up a couple that were on non-contracts. I have signed a couple from other clubs, um, but all realistic signings. And obviously, I've brought back an absolute legend into the game for just one season. There's also a couple of players that I've got not personal relationships with, but I've either coached in the past or players that I was fond of when I used to work at York City and I used to see the youth team players. Okay, so... George Sykes Kenworthy, now he was on a non-contract at Boston. We've picked him up. Um, he's going to no doubt be our number one goalkeeper this year. I think he was at Bradford City. Yeah, I think in one of the games a couple of years ago, he was actually pretty good. And at the age of 21, he's got decent, a few decent attributes there. Ex <laughs> eccentricity 15, don't know about that. Uh, but kicking 16, one of ones passing not bad. Reflexes, so we need to make a sweep, a keeper out of him. Um, rushing out as well yeah he's going to be good at coming off his line so we'll maybe look at using him as a sweeper keeper I'm going to go through the tactic later but we are looking to press and get up the top of the pitch and keep the ball so we probably need him as a decent sweeper keeper David Wheater is one of our centre halves you'll know him ex Middlesbrough Bolton Oldham he was on a free transfer 34 years old I think he was born in like Redka or something yeah Redka uh, right up the top end of North Yorkshire we won't get much out of him in terms of sort of like years but if we can get through the next two seasons with him as part of the squad, I'll be happy with that. George Wilson, a young midfielder who has come through at Blackburn, then went to Loughborough University and has been playing in Sweden. Uh, born in Halifax, only 20 years old. He has the ability to potentially progress. Charlie Bins, not at the standard that we would expect for this level. He's only a one star, but basically Charlie was at York City as a child. 
And as a youth team player there back in 2010, 2011, when I was there, um, really technical, skillful player, only five foot four. But he was on the tree, free transfer. I just wanted to make sure that we had enough players in the first team squad and in the under 23s. No doubt will only be with us probably for a year. But if he helps just supplement the squad for this season, I will be happy. One of the marquee signings is Jacob Butterfield. Free transfer, born in Bradford. He has had a long career at some top championship clubs. Cost Derby £4 million. He's been out in Australia as well. Luton, Bradford, Derby recently. Um, we've picked him up. He's going to be our anchor man. Probably our club captain this season. Luca Colville. Actually, we picked him up from Scarborough. Um, he's actually very good in the game. Three star, five potential, what, four and a half star potential has been at Huddersfield, Bradford and Morton. Another player who might be able to play in a, a few positions, but we are looking at a little bit of creativity in the middle of the park. And the next one is Sam Haberman, I think. Haberham? Haberman. That's going to be a difficult one to say. Left wing back, pretty good technically. Corners 15, crossing 12. We are playing with wing backs this year, just a little bit of a spoiler. Six foot, free transfer. I actually used him a couple of years in my York City save and uh, I was quite chuffed to notice that he was on the free transfer list and born in Rotherham, so qualifies for the club. Scott Harrison, a central defender, born in Middlesbrough, has been around sort of like Dalit and Sunderland, Bury up in the North East. Spenny Moore last year who were in our division, so a kind of a relevant signing. Got a few nice little mentals as well. Six foot two central defender. Jamie Hopcup. Now, this dude was at York City when I was there as a coach. He was in the youth team. Really good lad. However, York City didn't treat him very well. Got released. He ended up at Ostersunds. Now, if you're familiar with Ostersunds, that's where Graham Potter was. Graham Potter, ex-York City, by the way, Graham Potter, took him to Ostersunds. And he had a really good career in Sweden. Um, he actually scored a memorable goal against Galatasaray in the Europa League. I'll put that up right now. At this point where we scored that goal, he was just coming back from injury. Um, I think in and around here, when they got into the top division, he was linked with moves to the championship. I think Wolves and Aston Villa at the time, both in the championship, were looking at him. Um, never got the move. Then he suffered with injuries. He's been in Israel. In real life this summer, he's signed for Oldham. Hasn't really played for them. So what I thought was, I need to jump on board. I want him part of my squad. So I've got him in. We've offered him the same contract as what he had at Oldham. £800 a week. Can play out right. Can play on the left. In behind the strikers or even up front. So we've got a nice little bit of, like, nice bit of versatility there. But I'm really chuffed to have Jamie Hopcut in the squad. Kingsley James, born in Rotherham, has been around a bit, started at Sheffield United. Nice little player in terms of can do a little bit of everything for us. Nice squad player to have. Elliot Keeble, born in Halifax, has been around Leeds. Atletico Madrid signed him for 500,000. He's ended up at Hull and then Brighouse um, and has been around, not played much, but a nice little, we need, we're going to be playing with wing backs. So uh, we needed a little bit, a little bit of uh, depth in there. So we've gone for Elliot Keeble. Harry Kendrick is our sub goalkeeper. Born in Pennystone, I think. No, born in Barnsley. So we've got two goalkeepers, two young goalkeepers that are actually both pretty good. Terry Kennedy. Now, you won't be familiar with him, but if you are watching this in and around when I've released this video, this is the dude, if you look at, check out Lad Bible, this dude was the guy who was ringing up the National Lottery. He has just won £1 million on the lottery. And it turns out um, I was watching the video and then saw a news clip of saying X, X, footballer Terry Kennedy and I was thinking I've got him in my team um, so he's a millionaire but he's come to play for us which is nice of him in real life he's actually had to retire because of injury he hasn't played for a couple of years but to be fair he's got some nice little attributes heading marking tackling pretty good determination 18 we just need a little bit of strength in depth three star two star two star now potential three star It'd be a nice little backup for us Matthew Kilgallen Ex-Leeds United, Sheffield United, he's been around. Was he at Leeds? Yeah, Leeds as a kid. West Ham loan, Sheffield United, Middlesbrough, Blackburn. He's been where, he's been everywhere. 37 years old, born in York. He will probably just give us a season at the most. Alex Kawamia, son of Chris Kawamia, born in Huddersfield. Has a few nice little attributes. I just wanted to with a little bit of pace. An acceleration 15, pace 15. Remember, we are playing lower league level, so having a little bit of pace in your side is important i'm not sure how much he's actually going to play he's been a bit of a journeyman he started at rotherham chelsea 
Um, loan spells all over the place. He's been out in Turkey, was at Kings Ling last year, only scored two goals in 24 games. So not a great turnout for him, but it's a squad player, £400, £400 a week. He may be one that might end up getting released at the end of the season, but nice to have a little bit of pace in the squad. And the next one is Gabby McGill. He is son of Jason McGill. Now, Jason McGill is the current owner of York City in real life. Used to coach this lad as a, as a child, as when he was like eight and nine. Next one is Gabby McGill. Now, if you, know, you might not be familiar, York City fans will be. He is the son of the current owner of York City in real life, Jason McGill. Here is Gabby. He started actually with me as a, what, a nine-year-old. He played his first two or three seasons with me at Pickering Town when I was coaching his team. He then moved on to the York City Academy. He got a nice £100,000 move to Middlesbrough. Since then, he went. he's moved on to Dunfermline. Uh, a couple of spells at Edinburgh and York. He only played one game for York City. Currently, uh, currently in real life, he's at Airdrie. But because I know him, born in York, I wanted him to bring him back to the city. So I've got him in at the club. No, but Ruben Noble Lazarus is a player who has been at Barnsley, Scunthorpe. Not really settled anywhere. A um, little bit of a backup, to be fair. £400 a week. It's good. He can play in a lot of different areas. So if we need to change it up, um, and shout out to Callum Hayes, one of my patrons and scout on the series. Thank you for bringing him to my attention. The next one is Cammy Palmer. Now, an interesting one. Uh, just to be perfectly clear, I've changed his place of birth. So in, in the in the game, it didn't have him as born in York. I've done a little bit of digging and he was actually born in York. So he's born in York. He then moved with his family to Canada. He was spotted by Glasgow Rangers while in Canada. Ended up at Rangers. In real life, I think he just signed for Linfield. However, I've snapped him up. I just wanted to bring a player in that could come with us on a little bit of a journey over the couple of seasons. He's only 21. Maybe he has the potential to really kick on into be sort of like a League One, potentially even maybe a bottom end championship player. I wanted someone who had just a little bit of potential to progress with us, and I think Cami is that. Here he is. Big John, I've bought him back for one year, but obviously born in Barnsley. I have tried to change it. I've done, I've, I've literally put him back into the game just for one season. We needed a target man. I thought I need to get John in just for a season. I've actually tried to alter the pace and stamina to three and four, but for some reason, every time I do it in the editor, it keeps popping up as six. So we're going to have to go with it. But he's going to give us a season, no more than a season. But uh, yeah, Big John, the beast, hopefully can nod in a few goals for us this season. Callum Rosonka is an Englishman born. Is he born in York? No, he's born in Leeds. Came through the youth system at York. Another player that didn't quite get their chance at the club. Over the years, York City have released a number of players that have gone on to better things. And I think Callum is another one. In real life, he's just been released. He was out in Poland for a little bit. But to be fair, he's a nice little player. He's only 24. Um, we've got him on a pretty cheap deal. We'll see how he progresses. Callum Semple, centre-half, I think he's born in around Sheffield, yeah, Sheffield, started at Sheffield United, been in Scotland, really good centre-half, I think, for this level. And there we go, that is the squad. Now, that's the first-team squad. Now, in how it's working this save, we're not having an under-18s, we're not having a proper under-23s, basically my under-23s are like my B team. We're going to be playing friendlies like Brentford do, we've scrapped our generic youth system in terms of under-18s and under-23s playing the leagues. I want these to run a little bit like Brentford. We're going to bring players in of all sorts of different ages, give them sort of like trials, put them in the under-23s and play in friendlies. In here, we've got a couple of other players. Nathan Dyer, a lad who lives in um, Moulton, where I'm from, came through this youth system at Leeds. Uh, he started at Leeds, got a released by Leeds, I think about 16. Since then, has, has played at York for a couple of years. And in real life, I think he's now at Whitby, uh, but I brought him into the squad. Aaron Pilkington, an 18, he's got a weird picture, a really scary picture, um, but only 18 years old, right back, two star, two star, potential three and a half star, look, he's on 350 quid eight. I thought there was just a, a just a, I just thought it was just a chance that he might be half decent, he's been at Leeds, released at the end of last season with Leeds, we've picked him up, Charlie Jebson King, ex York City uh, left wing back. We just wanted a little bit of a cover in a few areas and a few players to play in the B team. And then Dar Darnell Mintus, another player, pace 13, finishing 13, heading 13, 5 foot 10. Uh, was he Leeds? Born in Leeds. Huddersfield, he's been at as a kid, not played a great deal of, bit of football. Another player just to put into the under 23s, act as a little bit of backup. All right, that is the squad. A pretty big squad. We've got lots of games. There's about 40-odd games of FA Trophy, FA Cup games. We're going to be... It's going to be a long season, so we need a little bit of strength and depth. We've done that with the squad. All right, they're the players. Let's go and have a look in the boardroom. And also, 
Let's see which ex-former players I have brought back to help me out in the backroom staff. Now, all right, so here is my backroom staff. We've got a long list of directors. It's a fan-owned club, remember? So what I've done is all my patrons on the channel have become directors, managing directors for the highest tier. Lewis Black was the competition winner as well. So he is the named, so he is named as the chairman. Big shout out to all you guys for supporting the channel as well. If you would like to become a regen in the game, at any point during the series, links to my Patreon down below. Go check it out. We also do, for the lowest tier, I'm also doing season review extra videos. So go check that out. Muchly appreciated. But here is the rest of the staff. My director of football is ex-York City, Leeds United, Sheffield United, everywhere basically. Um, he is my director of football. David Wetherill, ex Leeds, Sheffield United in Bradford City. I don't think he's actually ever left Yorkshire by the looks of it. So he's a nice, to be fair, few nice little attributes. His judging potential is not bad. Player management is not great. Working with youngsters. Got big Dave. And I can't remember a header he scored against Liverpool for Bradford City back in the day. Neil Redfern, ex-Barnsley player, has been at York City a fair bit as manager and um, as, as sort of like interim managers. He ended up getting the Leeds job by the looks of it for a little bit. Rotherham manager, Newcastle coach, and we've got him in an exceptional head of youth development as we really push on with youth, with, with the youth system in this save. And then we've got people like Andy Rhodes, goalkeeping coach, father of Jordan, Jordan Rhodes, the, uh, the striker. Um, Simon Clifford, interesting character. He's the dude that got all the Brazilian players. He's responsible for um, Brazilian soccer schools. Um, he does a lot of stuff in TV now, but working with youngsters, his fitness coach in bad. He was also signed by Clyde Woodward at Southampton. Didn't last long. There you go, Southampton coach. He came up with some crazy ideas in terms of training late at night and stuff like that. Um, we've got him in Yorkshire, Yorkshire born, all my coach, yeah, Middlesbrough born. Uh, we've given him the opportunity. There was a Twitter poll which Nick Bambi won. Uh, so he's a first team coach. We've got Nathan Kirby, which you guys won't be familiar with, but Nathan Kirby, uh, he went to school with my missus Amy. He has, now he is the head of performance analyst at Barnsley in real life now, but I've brought him across uh, to come and look after Athletic Club York. And in the background, we've got some of, we've got York City legend John McCarthy as a youth team, as a scout. We've got Jeff Miller, ex York City uh, physio. John Stockton, ex-York City youth team coach. Brian Dutton, a lad that I used to go to college with, used to hang about with him a fair bit. He had an unsuccessful spell in real life um, as manager of Walsall towards the end of last year. I brought him in and he's going to be looking after our under-23s and also part of our first team set up. All right, now that is, the, that is the players. That is the backroom staff. They are the board of directors. Let's look at the tactic that I'm looking at using, taking a bit of a risk in this first season. All right, so here we are. We're going with 3-5-2. The idea is that I want... The, the thing that I've had in my head for a while is we keep the ball as much as possible, much shorter passing, positive. We're going to be patient with our build-up. I think we're going to get up the top of the end of the pitch. I wanted... I was going to debate playing wide centre-backs. We're just going to keep it off for now. And as the save develops, maybe even this season, if we've got someone who can do it, we'll then progress on looking at having maybe some of the left centre-half, being a wide centre-back, someone can get involved... I wanted the anchorman, I'm basically thinking just Jacob Butterfield, club captain, sat in the middle of the park. And then I wanted two really expressive midfielders. I want an advanced playmaker who can sort of like move around the pitch, get on the ball as much as possible. I then want a central midfielder on attack to basically link play and get up to be the third man into the penalty area. And then I want two very high, two very aggressive wing backs, get into the byline, getting crosses in, pressing high. And then, but when we get it, we keep it, we look after it. That's the plan. Whether it comes off or not, I don't know. I just didn't want to go down the four four two, a winger on the left, a winger on the right, a box to box, and a ball and a and a box and a and a ball winning midfielder. I didn't want to do that. I've had this idea in my head. You know, if you've watched the channel, I love a three at the back. Let me know what you think to the tactic down below. We've got a little tactic working in the background as well, just as a summit, just to freshen it up. We have got a fair few wide players in the squad, so we've got that in as well to use that if we need to. Okay, there is the club. I don't think I'm going to do any signings uh, in the sum in this summer transfer window. We're just going to leave it. However, our rivals, York City Soccer Club, might just pick up a few transfers this summer. All right, so here is York City Soccer Club. Big shout out to the effing kit man who has provided me with two kits 
for York City Soccer Club. We've gone with the Y. Now, this was a kit very similar to one that they actually used when John Batchelor took over the club in 2000, I think 2002, 2000, somewhere around there anyway. Yeah, we've gone for that. And then because of the motor racing theme, we've gone with an horrendous away kit. So thank you to the FM Kit Man. Go check out his Twitter. If you want some kits for your save, go check him out. The club badge, York City, that's the original badge that was designed by John Batchelor as well. So everything is, has got a little bit of truth to it. The club itself is, I've given them £100 million. They've got £100 million in the bank. Plenty of money to spend. Noticeable signings. I've given them Drac Rodwell, Josie Altador, with that American theme. Come remember, the owner is an American billionaire. Freddie Adu, he's past his best, bless him. He's not going to be much good at all. I don't think he's going to feature for them at all. He will soon be out. Niall Ranger, just to cause a few problems with, within the squad. They've also got legends like Clayton Donaldson. I would love to have Clayton for a year. Born in Bradford, so you never know. Uh, Eric Lehigh as well, ex-American uh, international sixteen captain. I think he was around Aston Villa. Yeah, Aston Villa, not in Forest Leeds. So he's been around a bit. Decent player for them to have at that level. And then, of course, they've got a whole host of Americans in the backroom staff. I've proper gone for it. They've got Landon Donovan as manager, obviously USA legend. We've then gone for Ben Olsen, who was a player that I remember playing for DC United back in the day. Assistant manager. Uh, Brad Friedel, coach. John Max Moore, who had a spell with Everton in the early 2000s. John Batchelor, John Batchelor, chairperson. And then director of football. We've gone for Brian McBride. All right, so that is us. That is them, the other side of the city. We play each other. I haven't actually seen when we first play each other. I've just put a load of friendlies in. I think friendlies for me this summer are going to be absolutely key to get that, to get that system going. Where do we play York? Oh, two, weirdly two times. Weirdly two times in, what, the space of two weeks. So that might have to be just the one episode, the York, the York versus York episode. Really weird. Now the board, there's a little bit of pressure on, obviously we're expecting York City to just run away with it this year, but there's a little bit of pressure on us in terms of what the board want. Play attacking football, I've put that in. Develop play using the club youth system. Work within the budget is kind of, they want us to reach the playoffs. They want us to reach the playoffs. Now, there's top seven for the playoffs. I think we can do that. I think we've got the squad to do that. It's just whether my tactic that I've got in here replicates into what the FA match engine gives it. So, fingers crossed, it all works out. FA Cup as well, get to the first round. I think we've got to get round two rounds of qualifying. I think, I think we'll be okay with that. Towards the end of this current season, towards the next season, work towards gaining promotion. Two years' time, Two years' time, get promoted to the Vanarama National. And then, weirdly, at the end of 24-25, we're only allowed a season in the National because they want us to try and gain automatic promotion to League Two. So, yeah, we'll see. Importance, it just says one. So we've got time, hopefully, to, to, for things to change. But there's a little bit of pressure on from day one. I was trying to hope that we'd just have a nice, it's our first ever season, let's just take it nice and steady, but that's not going to be the case. However, the squad I've put together, I think... I think we can do some good stuff. I think we can do some good stuff this season. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. So next episode, Tuesday night, 9 p.m., we'll have the opening game of the season. We'll do two games. We'll do two games. We'll do Geisley and Darlington to start off the save. Two live comms. Here we go. There you go. There's the league, top seven. Also, what's the... Season preview, where second favourites look behind York. York are 91 to 1 on, which is crazy. So the pressure is on a little bit. As I said at the start of the video as well, guys, let me know. Let me know where you think we can get with this save. And at the same time, which of those players do you think is going to be our star performer this season? All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on Tuesday night, 9 p.m., opening start to the season. I'm a little bit nervous about this. I don't want it to go horribly wrong in season one, so stay with me. Stay with me. I need you guys down in the comments making sure I keep this job for as long as possible. All right, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. See you later.